Today we're going to talk about is the stock market going to crash in May 2021? Because for the past few weeks, the market has gone down, depending on what index you're looking at. So today we're going to deep dive into this. Is the market going to crash? What is happening to the cryptocurrencies and what would happen to your portfolio if the market crashes and how can you protect yourself from this? Anyhow, that's on the agenda for today. Let's just jump on the charts right away. And what you see here is the chart of the Nasdaq. And as you can see, over the past few days, it has been gone down, especially in the past three days, selling seemed to be have accelerated. So for today, the Nasdaq is actually, well, um, around, well, still up a little bit, but is the market going to crash? How can you protect yourself? And what will happen to our wheel positions if the market is crashing? That's what we're gonna talk about today. And I thought, in order to do this, it would be fun to bring on another expert. And the expert that I want to bring on is my head coach, Mark Hodge. And as you see from his signature that he has in his emails, he's not only the head coach, he's also a professional piranha wrestler. <laughs> Anyhow, hey, Mark, welcome. Hey, Mark, it's how's it going? And good, yeah, I did put that in my signature so I could hear you say piranha. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, so uh, let's just uh, take a quick look at the market. So the Dow Jones has been making new all-time highs uh, for, for quite some time right now. But then uh, two days ago and yesterday, it plummeted down. And uh, with the plunge yesterday, what was it? The, the worst day in uh, since January or something like this? I believe so. Right. So, but the Dow is only part of the picture. I think what most people are concerned are these growth stocks. And this is where we are looking here at the NASDAQ. And, and the NASDAQ had uh, quite a significant drop and people who are in, for example, uh, invested in Tesla or in, uh, let's just talk about SQ or, or any of these growth stocks. I mean, right now, these growth stocks have taken a beating over the past few weeks. Yeah. and. You know, right now, this is what's known as sector rotation, right? What is sector rotation? Well, when everything's going great, interest rates are low, people are bullish, the markets, they're willing to put their money in more aggressive stocks for, for future growth, stocks that you would imagine have, you know, higher future earnings and have the potential to grow faster, even though they might not be even showing profits right now. And, and so that's where the money's going. Now, when you talk about inflation concerns and you talk about higher interest rates, that's when people get more cautious. And that's where the blue chips or the value stocks become more attractive because people are worried about future profits getting eaten up by higher costs and higher interest rates with these growth stocks. And so that's why the NASDAQ stocks and tech stocks are taking a bit of a hit. But as you mentioned, the Dow was sitting at record highs just last week. Right. And so I just want to put it in perspective a little bit. So right now I switch to a weekly chart of the Nasdaq. Um, actually, uh, let me just bring this up and zoom in a little bit because I want to see where are we right now? So um, if you are looking at, let's just go up there. Hold on. So with the, with the drop that we had yesterday, we are down 8.47%, so around 8.5%. And uh, this is something that we saw also in March. I mean, in March, we had something very, very similar. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to jump to March. Let's see if we can move it up here. So in March, oops, the markets went down by 12.5%. And uh, we, we have almost forgotten this. Now, first of all, a true correction in the market is defined as 10% or more. So it has to retrace 10%. So we're not even there yet. It is 8.5%. But uh, let's take a look at a few other drops that we had earlier this year here. There we go. There's another 12% drop. What about this one here? So if you go here, we had another... 14, 15% drop almost. And then of course, last year, this is where everybody got super spooked. And uh, the super spook was during the COVID drop, right? This is when the NASDAQ actually dropped 30%. But I mean, things like this happen in the markets all the time. It is absolutely normal, right? So will we right now see a 30% drop? Well, I would say, even if, 
So what? <laughs> Let's just uh, go a little bit further back, uh, move the chart over, because we see these retracements happening all the time. So here, for example, if we look at July 2019, we also had a 9% drop in the NASDAQ. Before that, if we are going to April, April, May in 2019, we had a drop of 12%. And what happened towards the end of 2018, I mean, it's so long ago, we almost don't remember anymore. We actually had a drop of 23, almost 24%. If you're zooming out here a little bit and we're looking at this, we see that we have these healthy drops all the time and they need to happen, right, Mark? Exactly. And I mean, that's a good point, Marcus. It's, it's, it's healthy for the market to pull back, to retrace, and it, it does create buying opportunities. So a 10% retracement or correction, that's normal. That's okay. A 20% drop is a bigger deal. The 30% drop that we saw with uh, the pandemic and the initial move there, that's that's a big deal. You know, that's where people are getting fearful and they're pulling money out of the market. Right now, people aren't pulling money out of the market. Money might be going into blue chips and then people might be seeing a buying opportunity in tech, uh, but it's, it's definitely not the same thing, at least at this point. You know what, Mark? Let's actually talk about this uh, buy the dip of what it means and why it exists. First of all, money doesn't disappear. You see, after we see a run up like this or run up like this, or even here making new all time highs, I mean, traders who bought at this point are they, eventually you have to sell at some point and take profits, right? So how do you do this when you bought here at some point, you need to sell in order to take profits. Now, what happens when you're taking profits? Money, cash is being deposited into your account. And the key question is, what do you do now with this cash? Let me actually go to a blank page here because that's where we have kind of the holy trinity where we have uh, on the one hand um, money market accounts. This could be like CDs or something like this where we are earning interest rates. So this is one way where you can put money in it right now. Well, what is the interest that you're getting marked? 0.1%, 0.15%? Not much. <laughs> That's a say zero point two percent. Then, of course, <laughs> you have the stock market that you can invest in, right? So the stock market is another way where you can put money in, and the, finally, you also have real estate. So this is where we have this holy trinity, and money has to flow around from here to here to here to here, did I catch everything? Yeah, so money is not just sitting in cash because I mean, cash is trash, right? You might've heard about this. And since right now in the money market accounts, you're not getting any interest. Well, this is why a lot of money is right now flowing into the stock market. But then at some point you're taking profits. When you're taking profits, what do you do now? The real estate market is super hot. I mean, Mark, we, we talked about it the other day. I mean, houses are coming off the market and within a day or two, they're being snagged up. So it is clearly right now a seller's market. In a seller's market, you don't want to be a buyer. I invest in real estate. I don't want to be a buyer right now. Mark, you had an example of something that happened in your neighborhood, right? Yeah, in Sacramento, it was, uh, I think about a month ago, I believe it was 122 offers on uh, just a normal, three bedroom, two bedroom house in one weekend with multiple offers over the asking price. And I want to say they even turned down a $500,000 offer because they wanted to extend the, you know, the, the whole, you know, process. But anyway, uh, real estate's crazy right now. And Marcus, yeah. I mean, you were looking at even buying a resort. You know, yeah, I, I know, and you, you can't buy a resort right now if you wanted to. I mean, I'm trying to buy an apartment complex. You can't. I mean, it's crazy the asking prices that they're asking for it. So the, the other thing that is interesting about this picture is that the stock market and the real estate market both historically just go one way and that's up. Same in the real estate market. It goes one way and that's up. Now, what about interest rates? Interest rates, on the other hand, they fluctuate just like this. They're staying in a range. Who remembers the time when we had 10% interest rates, 9%? Was this in the 90s, Mark? Do you remember? 
I, I believe it was before the 90s. I think it was more the, the 80s. It's been, been a while. Right, right, right. So <laughs> it has been quite a while. And right now, there's not much money in cash. So it is fluctuating between the stock market and the real estate market is not really that interesting right now. I'm just want to save this. And here we are seeing the monthly charts of the Nasdaq. One thing that you see all in the stock market, it is constantly going up. I mean, here we are looking about a time span of 2013 to 2021. Now, in between, we have all these little dips. We, we have those and those are absolutely healthy. Those are happening when there's profit taking. But this is why in the long run, it has paid off to invest in stocks long term. So why, besides the profit taking, why do we have these dips and why could the market crash? And why could we possibly see a market crash now in May or uh, or not, right? So the two reasons why markets go down is number one, there is just simply some profit taking. If a market is getting too hot, then profit needs to be taken out of the market. Now, the second thing is uncertainty. So traders don't like uncertainty. That's how you spell it, I believe, right? And right now, we do have some uncertainty going on because let's talk about the economic calendar here. I want to bring up last week first. Last week, we had pretty bad news from the stock market. The unemployment rate actually jumped up from 5.8 to 6.1 percent. And that's not good for the economy because when people talk about the economy, right, how is the economy doing? Well, there's actually the one key indicator Mark, is jobs, right? Wouldn't you say? In an economy oh, yeah. that is doing good, unemployment is low. This is where last year when we had the pandemic starting, it was just going up like crazy, the unemployment rate. And it was going down, down, down. And we thought, oh, you know what? We got it under control. But now it is going up. So one thing that traders are concerned about when it comes to, uh, uh, when it comes to the market is unemployment. The other thing, Mark, and this is what, what has been uh, spooking the investors this week is inflation, right? So yep. inflation is the next spooky thing. And, and inflation, the Fed has a target of 2%. What does it mean? Year over year, we are okay with prices going up by 2%. Now, Mark, let me ask you, how does the Fed control inflation? How do they do that? With interest rates. With interest <laughs> With rates, interest right? Rates. There we go. Interest rates. So what the Fed does is if inflation gets high, they start raising interest rates and therefore inflation usually goes down again. And this is where right now there's the tricky part because we need interest rates low because low interest uh, rates are leading to jobs. How is that, Mark? How do low interest rates leading to more jobs? And I think, you see, this is why we're doing it today. I think it is super important that you understand a little bit of what's behind the market so that you don't panic when you see the market going down for two days in a row and dropping maybe 8% in a week or in two weeks. How do low interest rates create more jobs? Well, first of all, lower interest rates allow companies to borrow money cheaply for expansion. And this is why you hear uh, about these value stocks where there's growth stocks. So today, everything is pretty much in the green. But usually you see up here, all of these stocks are these so-called growth stocks. And down here, you have the value stocks. Also, growth stocks are usually in the Nasdaq. Value stocks are more in the Dow. This is what you see there. So especially these growth stocks, how do you grow a company by borrowing money? And as long as interest rates are low, it is easy to borrow money and to grow to have healthy profit margins. Now, if interest rate starts rising, this is increasing your cost. And when the costs are increasing, it means that profits are decreasing. This is the point, and this is what it all boils down to. So it just, I think, interesting for you to see how this all ties together. So I want to switch back to a daily chart here because now the question is, OK, what do we do when the market is going down like this? I mean, Mark, we, we have several trading strategies, and one of the trading strategies that we really like to trade is the wheel strategy. 
So what do you do when it is going down? Yeah, well, one of the good things or a benefit to the market falling is that when the market is dropping or there's uncertainty in the market, then that means that options are getting more expensive. So options are a derivative and they are based on stock prices. And when the market is just kind of going up, things are complacent, nobody's worried, options prices are cheaper. But when there's uncertainty, they expand, they get bigger, which means that we get to collect more premium. So, I mean, that's what we were doing this week. We were selling options on some stocks that we liked and that took advantage of the opportunity, took advantage of the drop. Absolutely. So uh, a few puts that we sold is, for example, on Apple, we sold the, the 119 put. And as you can see, this was just perfect. We got a lot of premium for it on the way down and now Apple was bouncing back today. So I know that you already closed it. You bought it back at 90%. I, I, I'll let it expire worthless. So this is one of the trades that we did. Another trade that we did was Boeing. So Boeing here also really a good trade as Boeing comes down and especially over the past few days as we had the dip here, this is when we can make a lot of money selling options. And so we sold the strike price of 217.50. So if Boeing stays above 217.50, we just keep the premium. Otherwise, we are getting assigned. So then we have, of course, LVS. LVS is actually one of the stocks where we are assigned. So we bought it at $58. Right now it is trading at 56.17, but we were able here now to sell calls. So this is what we did earlier the, this week. So we sold a, a call with a strike price of 59. Then we were able to buy this back today. So if you know how to play the markets, it is actually a good thing when the markets are going down because this is when you can pick up some really nice stocks. So we'll talk about right here in a moment, but I just wanna show these trades that we entered this week. We also picked up Snap and again, Snapchat was going down. So therefore we picked up the put. We sold this with a strike price of 47 expiring tomorrow. And as you can see right now, it is trading at 51. So this is great. And then we also had SQ. SQ is pretty interesting because SQ, we talked about it earlier, really seems to be bound to Bitcoin here. And Bitcoin right now is tanking. Yeah, this one uh, does have some exposure to Bitcoin. I think it was like 150 million or something like that, that they, uh, not the 1.5 billion that Tesla <laughs> bought, uh, but they have some Bitcoin exposure. So the lows today that were established with SQ were lock step, you know, same, same move that Bitcoin saw. Yeah, absolutely. So this is where trading the wheel strategy, when the market is going down as it does right now, when others are taking profits and selling, this is when we go on a shopping spree. This is what we have been doing this week. We just sold puts. We sold five or six puts this week. Then based on what the stock price does, you might or might not get assigned. And then number three, when you are, you are selling calls. So as the market is going back, you're selling calls. And I mean, this is just a, a strategy that we like to trade. It's not for everybody. It's not for everybody because during, while you're having uh, these stocks, you can experience a drawdown in your account. So you can have a huge unrealized loss. For example, so let's just talk about it, right? I mean, right is a stock that I was wrong. So I sold the 2150 and this is where I got assigned at 2150 and right keeps going down. So right now it is trading at a little bit less than $7, $6.98. Now I was able to lower my cost basis to $15.23. I actually was able to collect premium more than $9,000 in premium, which is lowering my cost basis to a break even of around $14.30 or something like this. Yeah, but as you can see, I'm still underwater. So what you need during these times, it's of course nicer when you have the, the index because the index is bouncing back fairly quick, especially if you look here at a weekly chart again, you see how many weeks does it take after a drawdown before it bounces back? So here it took what? One, two, three, four. So I wanna say here it was four weeks, here what was one, two, three weeks here one, two, three, four, five weeks here. This one, we don't know yet. When we had this huge, massive drop, it took us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
maybe 11, 11 to 12 weeks. Let's just say 12 weeks. That's only three months. Here it took us one, two, three, four weeks. Uh, here it took us one, two, three, four weeks. So as you can see here, uh, this is where <clears throat> usually the markets bounce right back. And we often see this also in stocks. Sometimes we, we were stuck in this Apple trade, Mark, remember? So we had yeah. the, the Apple trade. What we did is at some point we sold the 130, as far as I remember. So we sold the 130 and then the markets plummet and we're down. And again, this is now a daily chart again. So we have one, two, three, four. I want to say maybe it was five weeks that we were underwater before it was bouncing back up, right? So it happens, GDXJ, was another trade. So GDXJ, yep. so we got into this one and I believe it was at 48. So this was, I think, right here where we bought it at 48 and then it was going against us. It came back up, was going against us. And as you can see right now, it is going up again. And this is what we see. Sometimes it is better when we zoom out to a weekly chart to see a little bit the larger picture. Now, GDXJ is something that tracks gold more closely. It's the index of the gold miners, right? So therefore, it is not like other stocks like Apple, where when we look here at a weekly chart, we see that just in general, it just keeps going up. So the question is, okay, should we be concerned about a crash? First of all, having a retracement here, this is not even a correction. Having a retracement of 8%, is nothing. I mean, unless we start seeing something like we had here, 15% or 12% or 12%, or if you are going back uh, in time, if you're going before the COVID drop, mm -hmm. where we had uh, what, 9%, 12%, 23%, it happens all the time. And now you know better when it is. So what do you do during these retracements? This is when for us, okay, this is when we are selling puts and by doing so, we are getting paid for selling puts. And as the market bounces back up, we are buying it back. And if we are in a stock, we start selling calls. So having a down market, Mark, for me, that's not scary. It's a matter of, can you deal with it? And yes, as a trader, you need to have a stomach for this. I mean, this is not for yeah. everybody, right? I mean, this is where we're going back to the Holy Trinity if this is not for you, these fluctuations, then uh, consider money market accounts. I mean, admit <laughs> it, right now you're not making a lot of money there, but this is where you can lose money. Well, you kind yeah. of do because of inflation. <laughs> hey, Marcus, here's another interesting look at the markets. Pull up the symbol RSP. So RSP is an equal weighted S&P ETF. Okay. So what RSP does, so the indices, they're weighted. Like the, the S&P 500 has about 5.96% uh, of it is weighted in Apple stock. And then you have a little over 5% weighted in Microsoft. You have about 4%, a little more than 4% in Amazon, a little more than 2% in Facebook and uh, Alphabet or Google, 2% there. So basically about 20% of the S&P 500 is just based on five stocks, right? But the S&P 500 tracks 500 companies. So there are 495 other stocks that are in that index. And so RSP actually gives equal weight to each individual stock. And if you look at all 500 stocks, it looks like it's business as usual for the markets. Look at that. I mean, it just looks like we're trending higher. And uh, so I, I think that's an interesting take because yes, there's been some, you know, profit taking on some of the bigger names, but overall, I think that this is a positive sign.